Good morning. Welcome to Mass here at St Michael and All Angels Church in Inverness on this, the eighth Sunday after Trinity. It's a great pleasure that our church is being able to open again for public worship and the congregation can gather here in church once more. But I'm aware that there are others who cannot return to church yet and those who have joined us over these last few months from beyond the congregation. And the, uh, it's right that we should continue to host services online. And I pray that you will join us and have that sense of fellowship with us and a sense of being in God's presence and the presence of Christ being with you and within you. As we the name of Jesus sounds in a believer's ear, it soothes his sorrows, heals his wounds, and drives away his fear. It makes the wounded spirit whole and calms the troubled breast. Tis manna to the hungry soul and to the weary rest. Dear name, the rock on which I built my shield and hiding place, my never failing treasury filled with boundless stores of Jesus, my shepherd, husband, friend, O prophet, priest, and king, my Lord, my life, my way, my end, accept the praise I bring. Weak is the effort of my heart, and cold my warmest thought. But when I see thee as thou art, I'll praise thee as I ought. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Grace and peace to you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, to, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. As we prepare to celebrate the mystery of Christ's love, let us acknowledge our failures and ask the Lord for pardon and strength. Let us confess our sins in penitence and faith. God our Father, we confess to you and to our fellow members in the body of Christ that we have sinned in thought, word and deed, and in what we have failed to do. We are truly sorry. Forgive us our sins and deliver us from the power of evil. For the sake of your Son who died for us, Jesus Christ our Lord. God, who is both power and love, forgive you and free you from your sins, heal and strengthen you by his Spirit, and raise you to new life in Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, Almighty God and Father, we worship you 
same night Jacob got up and took his two wives, his two maids, and his eleven children, and crossed the ford of the Jabbok. He took them and sent them across the stream, and likewise everything that he had. Jacob was left alone. And a man wrestled with him until daybreak. When the man saw that he did not prevail against Jacob, he struck him on the hip socket. And Jacob's hip was put out to joint as he wrestled with him. Then he said, let me go, for the day is breaking. But Jacob said, I will not let you go unless you bless me. So he said to him, what is your name? And he said, Jacob. Then the man said, you shall no longer be called Jacob, but Israel. For you have striven with God and with humans and have prevailed. Then Jacob asked him, please tell me your name. But he said, why is it that you ask my name? And there he blessed him. So Jacob called the place Peniel, saying, For I have seen God face to face, and yet my life is preserved. The sun rose upon him as he passed Penuel, limping because of his head. Therefore, to this day, the Israelites do not eat the thigh muscle that is on the hip socket because he struck Jacob on the hip socket at the thigh muscle. The word 
of the law. In, in St. Paul's letter to the Romans, I am speaking the truth in Christ. I am not lying. My conscience confirms it by the Holy Spirit. I have great sorrow and unceasing anguish in my heart, for I could wish that I myself were recursed and cut off from Christ for the sake of my own people, my kindred according to the flesh. They are Israelites, and to them belong the adoption, the glory, the covenants, the giving of the law, the worship and the promises. To them belong the patriarchs, and from them, according to the flesh, comes the Messiah who is over all. God bless forever. Amen. The word of the Lord. Through the love of God our Saviour all will be well. Free and changeless is his favor, all, all is well. Precious is the blood that healed us, perfect is the grace that sealed us, strong the hand stretched forth to shield us, all must be well. Though we pass through tribulation, all will be well. Ours is such a full salvation, all, all is well. Happy still in God confiding, fruitful live in Christ abiding, only through the Spirit's guiding, all must be well. We expect a bright tomorrow, all will be well. Faith can sing through days of sorrow, all, all is well. On our Father's love relying, Jesus every need supplying, or in living or in dying, all must be well. Alleluia, Alleluia. Gospel according to St. Matthew in the 14th chapter beginning at the 13th verse. Glory to Christ our Saviour.
When Jesus heard that Herod had beheaded John the Baptist, he withdrew in a boat to a deserted place by himself. But when the crowds heard it, they followed him on foot from the towns. When he went ashore, he saw a great crowd, and he had compassion for them and cured their sick. When it was evening, the disciples came to him and said, This is a deserted place, and the hour is now late. Send the crowds away so that they may go into the villages to buy food for themselves. Jesus said to them, They need not go away. You give them something to eat. They replied, We have nothing here but five loaves and two fish. And he said, Bring them here to me. Then he ordered the crowds to sit down on the grass. Taking the five loaves and the two fish, he looked up to heaven and blessed and broke the loaves and gave them to the disciples, and the disciples gave them to the crowds. And all ate and were filled. And they took up what was left over of the broken pieces, twelve baskets full. And those who ate were about five thousand men, besides women and children. Give thanks to the Lord for his glorious gospel. Praise to Christ our Lord. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Last Sunday, when I drove home from church, I went past Roby Falls, place many of you will be familiar with. It is often busy in the summer, but on Sunday it was chock a block. The car park appeared to be gridlocked, and people were parked up and down the verges of the road. Such is people's desire to get out at the moment, to have some freedom. But unfortunately such freedom is not always exercised responsibly. There has been much in the media in recent weeks about the dreadful state of beaches and beauty spots after fine weekends, and of so-called dirty camping, where people go to enjoy themselves and then walk away, leaving others to clear up their unwanted items, their litter, and worse. It's not what we'd hoped for. During lockdown, there were good news stories about less pollution, about wildlife recovery, even of whales singing more in our oceans as the noise from shipping decreased. Of care for one another and helping others out. We hoped for a better world, and maybe it will still come, but some of these initial signs are not encouraging. In today's reading from Paul's letter to the Romans, we find Paul feeling something similar. Here he laments over Israel, his own people, God's chosen people, from whom came the Messiah, Christ. And yet, although they should have welcomed Jesus as the one they were waiting for, most had rejected him. It was not what Paul had hoped for. And we probably all know the frustration when our hopes for a better world do not come to pass. We know what God should be doing, so why isn't he? It's an age-old question. Why does God allow this or that to happen? It's a question we may have asked in recent months as the coronavirus pandemic spread around the world. It's a question I was asked last week. Why does a good God allow such suffering? There are no easy answers to that question. There are some that can help. The first is that we live in a fallen world. We don't live as God intended. God doesn't micromanage our lives. He gave us free will, but we misuse it. Our society is very individualistic. Our lives are dominated by our own well-being, our security, our needs, or more often wants. 
often at the expense of the suffering of others. We saw that at the start of the pandemic in this country when supermarket shelves were stripped bare. But one thing the pandemic has shown us is our dependence on one another. Dirty camping shows that we reap the consequences of other people's behaviour. More importantly, we are discovering that our protection, our health, is at least partly dependent on the responsible behaviour of others to reduce the spread of the disease. Before this pandemic, the selfishness and greed of some led to suffering through wars, famine, climate change, depletion of the world's resources. Such suffering is through the exercise of human free will, not God's intention. But not all suffering comes through poor human choice. It also comes from the way the world is. God created the world and saw that it was good, and we have no reason to doubt that goodness. He created a world with extraordinarily precise properties and laws that allow life. Very slight changes in these would make life impossible. It's a world of extraordinary beauty, of mountains and valleys, rivers and seas that provide environments for different species to thrive. But these come about by the movement of tectonic plates that also cause earthquakes and tsunamis, which lead to suffering. Then there is life itself. As well as providing for our needs, the millions of different species of plants and animals bring joy and fascination. God has created them to constantly change and evolve. But one of the ways in which such changes occur is through the natural action of viruses. And occasionally that can lead to illness and a pandemic such as COVID-19. So it can be argued that suffering is the price we pay for our free will and for a world of extraordinary beauty and diversity. But we should also remember that God knows what it is like to suffer as we do. In Christ, God chose to share in human pain and suffering to a degree that few of us have to endure. In addition, we know that although not intending suffering, God can bring good from it. Elsewhere in Romans, Paul says, suffering produces endurance, and endurance produces character, and character produces hope, and hope does not disappoint us. True, but not easy. Coming to terms with suffering is a struggle. Understanding God's purposes is a struggle. It is an encouragement to us that Paul also struggled with his understanding of God's purposes, but he did not doubt that they were good. Although his hopes for the people of Israel had not worked out as expected, he still says that God has blessed them forever. Our reading this morning from Genesis also speaks of struggle, as we hear how Jacob wrestled with God. As we have heard in recent weeks, the story of Abraham, Isaac and Jacob is peppered with deceit and mistreatment of one another. Yet they were the founders of God's chosen people, through whom God would bless the world. In today's passage, Jacob receives God's blessing, but is marked by the struggle. So suffering and struggle is something we should expect on our Christian journey as we seek to understand God's purposes in our lives. We are not promised an easy ride, but we are promised that God's purposes for us are ultimately good. Our Gospel reading reminds us that God's desire is to bless us, bring healing and wholeness. Familiar as we are with the feeding miracle, we should not overlook that first Jesus had compassion on the people and cured the sick. Then, when the disciples wanted to send him away, he used the five loaves and two fish for the miracle that met their physical need for food. Here, God's kingdom is set in sharp contrast to the ways of the world, 
the violence, selfishness and greed epitomised by Herod, who had just killed John the Baptist and saw Jesus as a threat. The feeding demonstrates the abundance of God's blessing. With 12 baskets of leftovers, one for each of the disciples, or for the 12 tribes of Israel, signifying that all are included. It's an abundant blessing that continues to this day as God feeds us in the bread of the Eucharist. When we look around at what is happening in the world, when the initial signs are not encouraging, when we see things like dirty camping and selfish greed, we need to learn to trust God and try to see the bigger picture of God's purposes as Paul had to. But we also have a personal responsibility for our own behaviour, to act where we are part of the problem, to behave towards others as Jesus did, with compassion. For God's purpose is to bless us, and God will take the smallest offerings of our lives, the loaves and fish, and multiply that offering for good. Amen. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one substance with the Father, through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate of the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray. The steadfast love of the Lord never ceases, his compassion never fails, every morning they are new. We are told that Jesus had compassion on the crowd and would not send them away hungry. The word compassion means to suffer with or to share in the suffering of others. So we offer our prayers for a suffering world offering them to God, who in Christ, through the passion of his cross, shares and understands the suffering of his people, the suffering of his creation. At this time of pandemic, we think on the millions who have suffered from the illness and the hundreds of thousands who have died. We pray for the countries where the situation is worsening, the places that have been through serious episodes and are experiencing a second rise in numbers. We pray for governments around the world and in our own country as they seek ways to control the spread of the virus and pray for a responsible and disciplined response from communities across the land. We pray for the success of work of scientists to find vaccines and medicines which will be needed in billions of doses. Lord, in your compassion, 
hear our prayer. For those in our world who suffer for other reasons, victims of war, oppression and persecution, victims of human trafficking and modern-day slavery, victims of prejudice and racial hatred. And we pray for those who have the strength and will to speak out, to call for justice and freedom, to work for peace and reconciliation. Lord, in your compassion, hear our prayer. We pray for those we know who are ill in body, mind or in spirit. We remember those who have asked our prayers, Mary Mulligan, Elsa Redmond, Heather Cuthbert, Father Gerald, Julia Sinclair. We pray for the National Health Service as it begins again to offer treatments that have been postponed. We pray for those who care for the elderly, for the lonely, for those who suffer from mental illness, and pray for voluntary agencies who reach out to help those in need. We remember those whose lives have been affected by the pandemic, those who are anxious for their jobs, for their businesses, for their well-being. Lord, in your compassion, hear our prayer. In recent times, we've heard of expeditions to Mars and to the Sun. As we seek to understand the universe, may we understand how to care for our world. We pray for your creation, for the right use of the world's resources, for the care of our environment, for the protection of all that lives. Lord, in your compassion, hear our prayer. We pray for the church here and around the world. We give thanks for the opportunity to open once more for people to gather in prayer and worship. We pray for this congregation of St. Michael's, for the congregation of St. John's, and the clergy and people of this diocese and Bishop Mark. We hold in prayer those who cannot yet return to church, that they may continue to feel held in prayer and in fellowship as part of your holy communion. Lord, in your compassion, hear our prayer. We commend to your eternal keeping all who have died as a result of this pandemic, as a result of violence or accident, we remember those who have died recently and pray for the repose of the soul of Chris Chadwick. And we remember those whose year's mind is at this time. William Ross, John Ross, Roderick McRae, Jack McKenzie, Mary Frances Gilmore, Duncan Lindsay, William Scott, Richard Wignall, and Diana Kali. Rest eternal grant unto them, O Lord, and let light perpetual shine upon them. The steadfast love of the Lord never ceases, his compassion never fails. As we think on all those for whom we have just prayed, we pray that each morning they may be renewed by God's steadfast love and compassion. Heavenly Father, accept these and all our prayers, which we offer in the name of Jesus Christ the Lord. Amen. We meet in Christ's name. Let, Let us, us share, share his peace. Where is bread? The great crowd murmured. Thousands and strong, yet all in need. Where is bread? Your people wonder, faced with such a crowd to feed. Who, Lord Jesus, could have guessed it? One small boy brought food to share, taking what he gave you, blessed it. 
All were fed with much to spare. Where is bread? We know their yearning. Every day we wish for more. God in time we're slowly learning. All we own can make us poor. Our possessions can possess us, leaving hunger deep inside. Christ our bread, come now and bless us, at your feast we're satisfied. Where is bread? The call is rising, millions cry, who must be fed? God, your answer seems surprising. You, my church, you give them bread. Bread to fill each hungry spirit. Bread for hungry stomachs too. Give us bread and help us share it. Richly blessed may we serve you. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this bread to offer, which earth has given and human hands have made. You will become for us the bread of life. Blessed, Blessed be God, God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this wine to offer, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become the cup of our salvation. Blessed be God forever. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. Worship and praise belong to you, Father, in every place and at all times. All power is yours. You created the heavens and established the earth. You sustain in being all that is. In Christ your Son, our life and yours are brought together in a wonderful exchange. He made his home among us, that we might forever dwell in you. Through your Holy Spirit you call us to new birth, in a creation restored by love. As children of your redeeming purpose, we offer you our praise with angels and archangels and the whole company of heaven, singing the hymn of your unending glory. Holy, holy, holy. when he was given up to death, 
Knowing that his hour had come, having loved his own, he loved them to the end. At supper with his disciples he took bread and offered you thanks. He broke the bread and gave it to them, saying, Take, eat, this is my body, which is broken for you. After supper he took the cup, he offered you thanks and gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you, this is my blood of the new covenant. It is poured out for you and for all, that sins may be forgiven. Do this in remembrance of me. Son's command, who recall his blessed passion and death, his glorious resurrection and ascension, and we look for the coming of his kingdom. Made one with him, we offer you these gifts, and with them ourselves, a single, holy, living sacrifice. Hear us, most merciful Father, and send your Holy Spirit upon us, and upon this bread and this wine, that overshadowed by his life-giving power, they may be the body and blood of your Son, and we may be kindled with the fire of your love, and renewed for the service of your kingdom. Help us, who are baptised into the fellowship of Christ's body, to live and work to your praise and glory. May we grow together in unity and love, until at last in your new creation we enter into our heritage, in the company of the Virgin Mary, the Apostles and Prophets, and of all our brothers and sisters, living and departed. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, with whom and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory be to you, Lord of all ages, world without end. Amen. As our Saviour Christ has commanded and taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The living bread is broken for the life of the world. Lord, unite us in this sign. We do not presume to come to this your holy table, O merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in your manifold and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under your table, but you are the same Lord, whose nature is always to have mercy. Grant us therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of your dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that our sinful bodies may be made clean by his most sacred body, 
and our souls washed through his most precious blood, and that we may evermore dwell in him, and he in us. Amen. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Jesus is the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. Happy are those who are called to his supper. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word, and I shall be healed. Lord, you are grace for our needs, strength for our weakness, light for our blindness, word for our deafness, love for our loneliness, joy for our weariness, peace for our anxiousness, wonder for our dullness, saviour for our hopelessness. Lord, you are grace for all our needs. Amen. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is gracious. And his mercy endures forever. Father, your steadfast purpose is the completion of all things in your Son. May we who have received the pledges of the kingdom live by faith, walk in hope, and be renewed in love until the world reflects your glory and you are all in all. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Mm. The peace of God which passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Lord of lords and King eternal, down the years in wondrous ways, you have blessed our land and guided, leading us through darkest days. For your rich and faithful mercies, Lord, accept our thankful praise. Speak to us and every nation, bid our churning discord cease. To the starving and the homeless, bid us bring a full release. And on all this as sore turmoil, breathe the healing of your peace. Love that binds us all together, be upon the church outpoured. Shame our pride and quell our factions, smite them with your spirit sword. Till the world I'm now beholding claims your power and calls you Lord. Brace the wheels of all your people who in every land and race know the secrets of your kingdom, share the treasures 
wonders of your grace, till the summons of your Spirit wakes new life in every place. The angel of the Lord brought tidings to Mary, and she conceived by the Holy Ghost. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Behold the handmaid of the Lord, be it unto me according to thy word. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. And the Word was made flesh and dwelt among us. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Pray for us, Holy Mother of God, that we may be made worthy of the promises of Christ. Let us pray. Pour forth, we beseech you, O Lord, your grace into our hearts, that we, to whom the incarnation of Christ your Son was made known by the message of an angel, may by his cross and passion be brought to the glory of his resurrection through Christ our Lord. Amen. O glorious Archangel Michael, chief and commander of the heavenly hosts, guardian of souls, vanquisher of evil, servant in the house of the divine King and our glorious patron, who shines with excellence and superhuman virtue, deliver us from all evil, and enable us by your gracious protection to serve God more faithfully day by day, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. May the divine assistance remain with us always, and may the souls of the faithful departed, through the mercy of God, rest in peace. Amen. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord.